Well, we're giving this Suzuki DF90 a 100 hour service. So that's going to be all the oils based on the engine, gearbox oils, impeller, all the spark plugs, fuel filters, everything. So we're going to go through it step by step, show you what tools you need and show you how to do the job. It's a bit of a lump of an engine, as you can see. What we're going to do right now, we're going to get some muffs on the bottom of the engine, right down here. You've got these ports on both sides. This is where it sucks the water in to cool the engine. What I'm going to do is fit the muffs, show you how they work, in case you're new to it. And then we'll get some water running through here. And we're going to fire it up and warm the engine up slightly before we drain these oils. A pair of muffs looks like this. Attaches to your conventional hose attachment. And literally, they slide on. Just like that. You can get ones which are double hosed. They are better. This is a cheaper one. It's not got any hose this side, just the other. Still works fine. It's just a cheaper setup. So that's going to squirt water into there now. The other side's blocked, so the water will stay in there and it'll suck it up and it should jet out up here. It's jetting water nicely, as you can see here. Make sure it's jetting water. As long as that water's running through the engine, it'll keep it nice and cool. We're going to leave this running now for about 10 to 15 minutes, let it warm up. We're going to run it in gear for a while just to warm up the gearbox oil before we drain it. And there we go. Let this warm up and we'll bring you back when we do the next part. Well, it's been running around 20 minutes now, so what we're going to do is switch it off and we'll start getting stuff removed and start getting these oils drained out. What we're going to do, we've tilted the engine up just so I can get access to the gearbox. What we're going to do first of all is drain the gearbox oil. The screw at the very bottom here is what you want to remove first. Then you've got a screw at the top here, which you remove second. If you remove this one first, and then you remove this one, you release the airlock and the oil gushes out straight away. If you release this first, a bit of oil will come out, but it's not going to gush out. So release that, get it under the tub, get the tub under it, and then release the top one and that get the oil drained. I'll show you now how to loosen this without damaging the head of this screw. We use an impact screwdriver. What we've got here, that's the impact screwdriver. Um, basically, it's got a Phillips like cross head in the top, I've put in, it's an attachment thing. What you do, put it on the screw, and you smack this part with the hammer. On the tool, you've got left, and you've also got right. Because we're loosening it, we want to go left for loosey, righty for tighty. So we'll go left, we'll put it on the screw now, and I'll show you how it works. So what we've got here now, a bottom gearbox screw. Make sure it's in and fitted, like that. What you're going to do on the back of here is give it a short, sharp tap. Just like that. And that screw's loosened now. That's the best way to do it without damaging the screw heads. Get the bucket under it ready because you are going to get a bit of a dribble. As you can see, it's not flowing too fast. What I'll do, I'll get the top screw now and it will start flying out. So you need to be ready with your tub. Any moment now, this oil should start flying out. You can see it's flowing a lot faster now than what it was. What I'm going to do now is slowly lower the engine with the tub under it, with Mark holding the tub, and get this all drained. Just need to try and get that in it. That's it. Yeah. As you can see, this oil is coming out very, very clean. You want to check this oil for any cream or anything. This is totally fine. There is no water in this oil. You can check in for water in the oil in case your prop seals and stuff have gone. But as you can see, this oil looks new. So this is totally fine. Well, this is under the cowl now. As you can see straight in front of us, we've got the four spark plugs, as it's a four cylinder engine. We've got the fuel filter here. Around this side, you've got your dipstick, where you can check your oil level. Your oil fill is right up here, that yellow cap. The oil filter is located inside there. What you need to do is undo this plastic cowling to get to it. But we'll come to that in a moment. Well, this is the full service kit this is. Genuine Suzuki parts. Fuel filters there, impeller there. Two spare fibre washers for your gearbox oil drain screws. Oil filter, four plugs, gear oil and engine oil. That's everything right there. This was brought from Pacer Marine. There is a shop on eBay and it was £160 posted for these parts. 
which is not bad at all. They're a pretty cheap shop. The parts are all quality. We never have any issues using them. So if you want a good marine shop to use, have a look at Pacer Marine on eBay. I do think they've got a website as well. So yeah, that's where we get all our parts from. We've never had an issue. Right, let's start getting these new parts into this engine. Well, I've loosened all the screws on the Kaolin. All the screws on the Kaolin are either a Phillips or you can use an 8mm socket. I'd recommend using an 8mm socket. It'll be easier to get it out. We've removed all of the screws. I can't show you all of them because they're somewhere in the back and it's very tight. You've got three at the front. You've got one around the back there and I think there's two up the rear end there. You then have this seal here. That seal goes all the way around. Carefully lift it off the engine. And once that's off, we can get the lower casing off and get access to the stuff we need to get access to. Well, as you can see here, we've re removed one side of the casing and your oil filter is located right there. So what we're going to do now, start getting the spark plugs done, oil filter done and get the other parts done. Well, what you've got down here is the engine oil drain plug. If I zoom back a bit, look, you can see where the engine is there. You come down the side of the leg after you've removed the casing and you've got it right there. Um, this is a size 6 Allen key. I have already loosened it. This nut is a little bit rounded, slightly, the Allen key attachment inside. I have to use the impact screwdriver for this. You don't want this rounding off because you'll have a nightmare getting it out. So if it starts to slip, stop. Don't carry on because you're just going to make it ten times worse. Get someone with the right tools to get it out. This, as you can see, is now loose. Like I said, we use the impact screwdriver. What we're going to do now is remove this oil drain nut. Mark's holding the tub in place. It's easier with two, less mess. We'll get this out. The oil should gush out. Just like that. We'll leave that to drain. Once it's fully drained, we'll get the nut back in and then get ready to refill the oil. What I'm doing now, I've done the bottom three spark plugs. I've got the top one to do, so I thought I'd show you the top one. Wiggle this and gently pull it. Don't pull it by the wire, hold the top. Give it a wiggle and a pull, and it'll pop out. But yeah, do not hold the wire, you might damage it. What I'm using, this actually came to toolkit with the boat. This inside here is very thin. You have to buy a special socket for it if you don't have one of these. And it's pretty deep, as you'll see. That's how far in the plug is. With a tool kit that comes with a boat, it fits fine, obviously. But if you haven't got one, you're going to need to get one. I'll get this spark plug out now. As you can see right there, that's the plug out. That plug's burning tidy, looking at that. It's got a little bit of rust around it there, because where it's been sat all winter. That's normal. So we'll get the new spark plug in and that's it. What you need to do, double check the spark plugs are the same. This is a spark plug we're putting in this one, BKR6E. The code on the old plug is exactly the same. So double check the codes. You don't want to be putting the wrong spark plug in. Don't always trust the people you buy it from because it could be a mistake. If you put the wrong plug in and this is longer, it could end up slapping the top of your piston. So you need to be sure you've got the right plug um, some engines are sensitive to gapping. There's nothing on this engine, no stickers to tell you what the gap should be. So we'll leave it as we'll leave it as it is, and we'll get it in the engine. When you put the spark plug in, you've got to be seriously careful. You do not cross thread it. I've done this a hundred times. I'm used to it. If you're not used to it, if this starts to go tight when you put it in, you have to stop immediately. There is one tip I can give you. On this part of the spark plug, what you can do is get a bit of garden hose. If you push garden hose on top of here, put it in and you start turning. If you cross thread it, the hose will slip. If you're not cross threading it, it'll go straight in until it bottoms out. And then you only need to give it a quarter of a turn to tighten it. So if you're, a bit, if you're not confident about putting the plugs in without cross threading them, get a bit of garden hose on this part here and that will stop you cross threading it. But get it in, keep it nice and straight and turn. And that's it, look, that's going back in, totally fine, doing it by hand. If you have to use a ratchet to put this in, you have cross-threaded it, so stop. But this is going all the way back in by hand, that's what you want. These should not feel tight going in. If they do, there's an issue. Do not force it. It's bottomed out there now. So what we'll do, that's about a quarter of a turn. Give it a tiny bit more, that's it. I'd say that was probably just in between a quarter and a half a turn roughly but every engine is a little bit different give that a wiggle it's got rubber inside there which grips the spark plug so it is a bit tight getting it on and off that's all the spark plugs done get this back in make sure it's in you hear a pop usually just like that and that's it job done make sure all the cables are clipped into the clamps and the bottom the engine oil is drained so what we're going to do is remove the oil filter next 
might be a bit dark in here. The oil filter is right here. What I've got, I've got a, a special oil filter tool. Um, I'm not sure what this is actually called, to be totally honest, but the measurement on here, the size on here says 68 slash 14. I'm not sure if you'll see it inside the disc, down the bottom there, 68, 14. Um, I've got a huge kit of these, I don't buy them individually. It's a massive kit, universe one with about 30 of these caps in, so I've never had to buy a single one. Anyway, it'll fit over the end of the oil filter. Get the ratchet on there, and it should undo nicely. So we'll get the ratchet in there, just like that. Proper tool for the job. No messing about, no hassle. That's done. What I've done here, I've stuffed some kitchen roll underneath it. You could use a towel, you can use whatever you like. You are going to lose oil out of this. Best thing you can do, remove it as fast as possible and tip it up. That's the best thing you can do. Just like that. You lose less oil. This is absolutely full to the top with oil, so get it tipped out in the tub below. What I'm going to do is have a quick wipe around, get rid of the excess oil that's spilt out of the filter housing. And we'll get the new oil filter put in. We've got the new oil filter here. You've got a rubber seal. What you're going to do, rub a bit of fresh oil around that rubber seal, all the way around it, give it a good coating. What can happen when you refit this, if that's dry, it can pinch you, and then you can have a leaky oil filter. So just get it lubed up nicely with some of the new oil. This is ready to be refitted. I've cleaned everything all around here, got all the old oil off, so that's ready to go on. Same again with cross-threading stuff. Thread it in the centre like that. As you can see, that's spinning on nicely by hand. I have got oil on my fingers, and I'm still screwing it in. Obviously, oil on my hands, it's slippy, and there's no resistance there. Now, I'm coming to bottoming out. It's nearly all the way in. Get it tightened up, and that's the oil filter done. As you can see, this don't need to be that tight. That is enough. Right there. That was probably a quarter of a turn. Give this oil filter, the new one, a wipe over. Get rid of any dirt, any crap, any drips. And the reason why, if you get rid of all the old oil now, off everywhere, if this leaks, you'll notice it. Because it's been completely wiped clean. So, have a good look in there. Make sure there's no drips anywhere. Make sure it's spotless. Once you fill it up, you run the engine, you can double check it, it should be bone dry. What I've done here now, I've wiped it all out, got it all nice and clean. Here is the sump nut, as I call it, like a car, the oil nut. Get your crush washer on there, just like that, and we we'll get it threaded in now. Same as the rest of it, it should be easy, just like that. Shouldn't be hard to get it in. If it's hard to get it in, you're cross-threading it. We'll get this tightened up now, and that's it, done. We can refill the oil. What you can do, Pull it forward slightly. You won't go much, you've got pipes. What you need to do is grip the clamps on this pipe right here. So we'll grip those with the pliers. We'll push it back, just like that. We'll do the same with the top one. The top one's easier to get to. To make it easier for you to get these pipes off, sometimes they're tight, sometimes they'll just pull off. Little flat blade screwdriver behind the pipe there and push it backwards, look, just like this. You are gonna lose a bit of fuel when you do this. Same with the top one, push it back. Be very careful, you don't want to damage this pipe. It's easier to push it back with a screwdriver, just like that, than it is to do it with your fingers. So, just take our time. Don't want to be damaging the pipe. There we go, nearly there now. And that's it, it's off. You can see there's fuel inside there. Keep it tilted that way, stop the fuel draining out. What we'll do is get the new fuel filter and we'll get it installed. As you can see here, we've got the new fuel filter. Don't open this until you're ready to use it. You don't want to start getting bits of dust and crap inside it. So, get it opened, get it fitted straight away. Fitting it is a little bit fiddly, because you've got to try and put pressure on the pipe to get it on. As you'll see right now, it is a bit tight. as you can see there, both clips are back on, and that's done, finished. What we're doing is undoing the bolts along the bottom of the leg. There's three on each side, these are 14 mil, and you've also got one up here. So you need to remove that little plate from there. As you'll see now, I'm undoing the bolt, and it's coming off on its own. So this leg will be easy to remove. This is the reason why I want to leave those bolts in a little. 
because it'll stop this leg dropping off. So we've got this one out. What we'll do is get the other six out and that leg will be ready to come off. We've removed all the bolts now, so this leg should drop off. It's quite flipping heavy. I don't want to drop it. It's not mine, <laughs> it's Mark's. And there we go. That's the leg off. So we'll get the impeller housing off now and we'll get it changed. Right here, we've got four bolts. This is the impeller housing. These are 12 mil. I have already undone all these to speed up the video. We're losing the light. You might be able to tell in the video. So we've got the four bolts out there. And it's a case now, this should just lift off. You don't want to be putting anything under here to pry it because you damage that plate, you'll have water seeping out. So basically, we go back and forth and it should pop off like this. This is your impeller housing. You want to make sure it's nice and smooth inside there. No scores, no damage. This is absolutely spot on. Nice and smooth, no damage. Gasket surface is all good and clean. So that can go pretty much straight back on. We will give it a little bit of a wipe. But as you can see, it's like a mirror in there. It's nice and clean. What we'll do now, get the impeller off. When you pull the impeller off, there's a little keyway there. There's a little metal, chunk of metal, which engages the impeller. Make sure it doesn't fall out and drop down inside one of these water jackets. What I'm going to do here is use a screwdriver under the edge of it carefully, just to start it. Well, that's the impeller done, that's off. My finger is over the keyway. The keyway is right here. You do not want to lose this. I'm going to turn it away from that water jacket, look. There's a water jacket here. If it falls out there now, we're safe. But this is ready for the new impeller, so we'll give this a wipe over here, this surface, and we'll get the new impeller straight on. What we're going to do is take this plate off as we've got a new one in the kit. So we're going to pull it off. Underneath here, you also have a gasket, look. And we've got a new one of those in the kit as well. So what I'm going to do, give this surface a quick clean around here. We'll get the new gasket on and the new plate and get it all put back together. Just installing the new gasket now and the plate. Gasket, it's got a little lug on this side. Drop the gasket in, drop the plate in, just like that. Now, that's ready for the impeller. Another thing we've got in the kit is a new little, it's called a wood roof key. I think that's the actual name of it. We've got a new one of those in the kit. So what I'm gonna do is keep it on this side of the engine. So it's away from this slot. You can add a little bit of grease to this to help it stick in place, but this should be fine. We'll push it inside there like that. Got the new impeller here. This impeller only goes on one way. This is the top. If you look, you've got the slot there at the bottom for the little key. And there we go. I've had to get a bit of torch, light on it. It's dropping a bit dark now. We can't actually see what's going on. But yeah, you can see I'm turning the impeller and the shaft's turning with it. So that's it, done. Now it's time to get the impeller housing back on top. We drop it onto the shaft. What we're gonna do is turn this shaft clockwise by hand and put a little bit of downwards pressure on the impeller housing. Just a little bit, like this until it seats. Just like that. That's it, in position, ready for its bolts. Well, as you can see now, that's it, all refitted. It's ready to go back onto the engine. So, I showed you removing it. Refitting it is exactly the same. One thing you can do, you can put it into gear and you can spin the propeller to spin the shaft to align the teeth, which makes it easier. But what I've just done, I've just put the boat into reverse. I've turned the shaft at the back into reverse, so when we spin this propeller now, the top shaft spins, as you can see there, which will make it a lot easier to align it. Spin the prop. Spin the prop. Actually spin it the other way. That's it. Spin. Well, we've lost the light now. The only two things left to do is fill up the engine oil. So we're gonna get the engine all done and we're gonna get the gearbox all done. But the engine is back together, completely finished. Brand new impeller, all done. Well, we've completely lost the light now, as you can see. Um, what we're doing, I've got a quick silver pump here for the gearbox. It pumps the gearbox oil into the engine. So you screw it into the bottom right there. You've got a hole at the top. You keep pumping this in till it comes out the top. Once it starts coming out the top, you have to put the top screw in, then you unscrew the bottom, and then you put the bottom screw in. But yeah, that's what I'm doing, just like this. 
It's a slow process, takes quite a while because the pump's slow, but you just keep pumping it and pumping it and pumping it. We've probably got a quarter of a bottle left, so I'm expecting it to fill up very soon. But yeah, sorry about the light, but this is the end of the service now anyway. You've seen all the main parts, this is just filling the oils back up. So, we'll carry on with this, and I'll bring you back when it's finished. As you can see here, hopefully you can see, the oil has started coming out the top. As I pump it, look, the oil is starting to come out, that's what you want. So I'm going to replace the top nut first, and then we'll get the bottom nut in last. What this will do, it'll help create like an airlock, and you won't lose so much oil at the bottom nut when you remove the pump. Give it a quick wipe down, get rid of any excess oil for now. And then we're going to remove, we're going to remove this at the bottom and get the bottom nut in. Well, that's the engine completely finished and serviced. As you can see, it's completely pitch black, but that's the fun when you work full time hours and you've got to get your boat ready for the season. That's how you do a 100 hour service on a Suzuki DF90. All done. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and consider subscribing.